What's up, everybody? It's Jeffrey Lyles. You are listening to Lyles Movie Files. Uh, it's been crazy. This uh, virus I have, uh, who knows if it's COVID or not, but I'm still plugging through, still providing this fresh podcast entertainment for you. Joining me tonight, the main man, Jay King. How are you, man? Hey, I'm cooling, man. I'm living the quarantine La Vida Loca. <laughs> what else can you do? Trying not to... What else can you do? Trying really hard to stay uh, uh, sane here. And, and my man, Chief, how you doing over there? I'm good. I'm good. You know, uh, everything's well. Everybody's well. So that's uh, definitely a positive. Perfect. I have, I'm going to just start off. We're going to just go through a bunch of items. I want to hear what you guys think about this. So we've had a lot of remakes coming out in 2020. Some have made it. Some are in the works. I don't know if you guys have seen this trailer for the new Saved by the Bell. It's life changing in a bad way. Where it's like, I suddenly felt like an adult watching that show for the first time in just a trailer. Where it's like, there's no laugh track and nothing is making me laugh here. Crazy. But you are definitely not going to have any laughs at the upcoming reboot of The Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Because it is going to be a dramatic take that will dive deeper into the inherent conflicts, emotions, and biases of what it means to be a black man in America today. You guys ready for that? No. No. I mean, look, I, when we were coming up, the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air was Will Smith. And and, and 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 Alfonso Ribeiro and James Avery and so forth. Jazz. It. I, I saw the trailer last year and thought, ah, oh, that's funny. You know that, that that that's cute. That's funny or whatever. Like that 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 could be a that that that's perfectly captured for that. Somebody's got a good sense of humor in making it into a drama. I didn't think, oh wow, I would want to see that. No. It, it's Give us, if you're going to do that, right, if you're going to do that, make it without being attached to the Fresh Prince. Just make that story. It doesn't have to be attached to a, a, a beloved 90s sitcom. It really doesn't. It's not adding anything to it for me. And for the Save by the Bell, it's the same thing. We're not adding anything to these properties. They're already well-known and well-established. To put a dramatic spin or anything on it like that, it's, it's, it's kind of silly, and it just shows that Hollywood is out of ideas completely. Yes. Chief, how about you? You looking forward to this non-sitcom take on The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air? Absolutely not. Uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what they're doing anymore. I think they're just, you know, like, like Javon said, they've just ran out of ideas. Um, who... I don't really need a lesson on on the, on the stories of a black man on the struggles. I, I live that story. I am that struggle. Um, you know what I mean? Why do I need to be reminded of the everyday bullshit through TV? Um, you know what I mean? Like, That's going to grow on, Chief. So, uh, yeah. Um, you know, like, mm, I got pulled over by a cop. Oh, that's right. Tonight on our Fresh Prince, he's going to get pulled over by one. Let's see if our interactions are the same. I don't, yeah, I don't need that. I don't need that. You know what I mean? I know, you know, I know I'm black. I can't hide it. You know what I mean? You can can hide certain things. You can hide being gay. You can hide, you know, whatever. You can't really hide being black. I live live the story. I don't need to to watch a story about my story. So, um, and you know, uh that you're talking about a um oh my damn phone switched off, hold on. Iconic iconic characters. And now you've changed that to uh you know, some some new I, you know, uh maybe the youngins. I don't know how it is for this new generation. You know what I mean? Maybe if you like the genius type, I don't know. So we'll see. Yeah, not not really looking forward to that move. So fellas, um, 
We're going to get a new Tron movie. And Jared Leto is going to be in this one. <laughs> Siobhan, you, you already don't sound sold on this one. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Jim. I don't have a synopsis. That, that is the entire news item I had to share with you. Take it away. What's your thoughts on that? They're going to give him a gold grill and dye his head green for this one, too? Uh, look, they tried it, what, 10 years ago now with the Tron reboot? Yeah, Tron they tried to modernize it. Yeah. It was all right. It was all right. I, I felt like this with Tron Legacy. I really lost interest once I saw the the the, the, the Tron world. Like, once I saw it, <laughs> That was it. I didn't care nothing about uh, what's my what's my man? Um, God, what is his name? Uh, I can't think. I can't think of my guy's name. The dude. I didn't care anything about his son. I didn't care anything about the story. Once I saw Tron World, I was like, okay, that served its purpose, and I'll, I'll never watch this movie again. I, I can't imagine ten years later, Jared Leto's gonna make it any better. It's like, all right, we we know Tron. I just really want Hollywood to give us something we have not seen. I want I want the the Big Trouble in Little China or I don't care, man, Predator of this era. I want the something that was Gremlin, something that was brand new when you saw it. Like, whoa, this is this is something new. I haven't seen a movie like this. I want something brand new out of Hollywood. Doesn't look like we're gonna get that anytime soon. Because for what it's worth, they still got properties to rip off from the eighties, nineties, <laughs> hell, even the set, even the early two thousands are on the table now. It's twenty years ago. I saw. Uh, I gotta check out the screening. Would you be interested in checking this out for an American Pie update told from the female perspective? And I was just like, uh, uh, it wasn't uh, like there weren't women in that. American Pie series, <laughs> they were treated, we, you know, pretty much the same way as the dudes were in that. You know what, though, Jeff? They're gonna what they're gonna do is make it too raunchy. They're gonna make, and here's the thing: I'm not one of these guys that's like I'm offended by the WAP song because that's a new thing, you know, right now, where men are getting offended by because women are talking about their their lady business or what have you. Hey, I don't care, ladies. Talk about it. Be as raunchy as you want to be, but that don't make it funny. And I'm not saying that to knock the ladies down, because when 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 you got a guy picture, when you got a picture that's exclusively centered around the male point of view, male guys being pigs, it's not fun. Being a pig isn't funny just for the sake of being a pig. You actually have to be funny. Mm-hmm. Like saying titties, butts, and whatever isn't. It's just not funny just because you're doing it or being a pig or being overtly sexual. You got to be funny. That's kind of the requirement. And what I'm afraid of with these movies when they have all female casts, especially in this kind of uh, arena, they're going to up the ante on raunchy females. You know, they're going to they're going to really overdo it and it's not going to be funny. It's just going to miss the mark. I don't care if they say whatever, you know, it, that doesn't bother me. What bothers me is when it's not funny and I don't care who's doing it. Trying too hard isn't funny. You know, it's just, it's not funny. You can throw as many curses, you can throw as many raunchy jokes and words or whatever, raunchy situations. If it ain't funny and it's not landing, it's just not funny. You don't care who's delivering it and from whose perspective it's coming from. Chief, what's up with a female American pie? You want to check it out? Uh, why? I don't, uh, why, why does it have to be the American pie? Why can't it be just some female movie where they're doing their own? Like, you know what I mean? Give the females some some movie where they're doing their thing. Um, and and let's be honest, I, I, you know, after the first couple of American Pies, they were garbage. Anyways, I mean, the first one or two you might have enjoyed, and then it just became like the same thing over again. Um, you were watching the you were watching this this the, the same show again, just different uh, scenarios. You know what I mean? Same jokes, <laughs> same whatever. You know, <laughs> the fifth man. You know, my man is going to hit his mom's at the end of every every show. 
uh, it's going to be the same. It's just the same. Okay, yeah, we've seen this. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, okay. So what's going to be original about it? You know what I mean? It's going to be, uh, somebody you know. Somebody after somebody's dad. Well, or there's going to be some crude jokes. There's going to be a dance scene probably. Uh, Chief, you know you love your dance scenes. I do love a dance scene, but I love a damn scene, dance scene from from an originality aspect versus, uh, you know, coming, you know, this this American Pie thing. I, I just I don't I don't mm-hmm. I don't need to see it. I'm cool. I'm good. I'm. You I'm know. gonna tell you, hey Chief. I'm gonna tell you something else too. We ain't gonna have that stiffless dad joke in this one because somebody ass is going to jail. <laughs> Yeah, they don't, they, look, they don't play nowadays. You, I, you know, <laughs> that's funny how they're doing the remix, but you can't really do certain things in movies that you did 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago. Like, the climate now won't allow for, for certain things. Like, you know what I mean? If you do a Mrs. Robinson remake, the people will be up in arms. She was a pedophile. You know, it's, 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 oh, absolutely, ex criminal. You, yeah, they'll you be can, trying to can. cancel the actress who played her. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, um, you know, it is what it is. But I, you know, uh, I'm not interested. I don't want to see. I don't want to see another American Pie. Period. Okay. Um, it is what it is. Guys, girls, it doesn't matter. Dogs, cats, chickens, it doesn't matter who they are. I don't want to see another one. All right, I'm going to start into this topic because I'm very curious what you guys think about this. So we're going to go talk about DC for a little bit. But I wanted to start off talking about Batwoman. Ruby Rose had an interview with Entertainment Weekly. She described why she decided not to return for the second season of the show. There's a quote. Being the lead of a superhero show is tough. Being the lead of anything is tough. But I think in that particular instance, it was a lot more difficult because I was still recovering from my surgery. I had my surgery, and then 10 days later, I went to work, which maybe wasn't the best idea. Most people take about a month or three off before they return to work, so I was definitely so it was definitely made more difficult by that. I'm proud of myself for working under sort of interesting circumstances, you know, with the recovery and all. I would definitely do TV again. I just think that it was also time for me to take a break to fully heal and then return. And then she adds, it wasn't so much the injury, especially because after we wrapped up, we didn't get to finish the real finale because of COVID. You know, you have time in quarantine and sort of isolation. Just think about a lot of different things, what you want to achieve in life and what you want to do. So this is kind of interesting because it's it sounds like CW maybe were like, hey, we got this show coming up. You messed yourself up, you know, doing a scene, but we kind of need to keep everything rolling. So no break. We got to keep this thing going. And then she's like, well, I came back too early. And then when she had time to be away during quarantine, thinking maybe I don't want to do this superhero TV show any longer, which is kind of interesting because it's like the first season. You get to be the you're the centerpiece of a show, not a supporting character. And you decide, eh, maybe I don't want to do this anymore. But do you think she should have had more time to recover? Maybe her opinion on that whole being the lead of an action superhero show would have changed. Chief, what about you? What do you think? Uh, no. Um, I think it's a whole bunch of bull anyway. Uh, I don't, I don't believe people when they say things like that. You know, it's, it's you, you. <laughs> So you you two the two of you have jobs where you sit at your desk, right? And I mean I don't I don't think that you do anything terribly physical at your job, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, correct. No, I think not. Okay. So I do a physical job. I'm lifting manhole covers, I'm in manholes, I'm in bucket trucks, I'm uh lashing fiber to cable, um whatever. You know, I'm, I'm putting fiber in underground, so on and so forth. So you bang yourself up at the job, right? Um, 
but the, the difference here is when I hurt myself at the job, either I can go, or, you know, I'm out, or I can't. And if I can go, there's no stunt double in there for me. So for people saying that if she was hurt like she's saying she's hurt, a lot of her scenes probably could have been done with a stunt double. You know what I mean? I think they could have worked around her healing. So you didn't have to do anything other than stand and talk, fake a few scenes, when the time time for you to run, if you were in your, you know, your regular clothes, all they had to do was a, a running scene. I mean, they've hit pregnancies, for God's sake, of characters on shows. So I don't see how they could have, you know, as long as you, they could show you, they could have stunt doubled you for anything. So when you do that type of work and you're an actor or an actress or you have stunt people, I wish I had some. I wish I could hit my hit my hand or mangle something on me or bust something open and be like, mm, hey, hey, Bill, you're up. I'm going to sit this one out. There's no stunt double in, in, in real life. You have stunt doubles. You have people who will come. And so that doesn't, when somebody says, ah, oh, yeah, the physicality and yada, 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 tell them for the next two to three months you can't do your own stunts. You understand what I'm saying? Like, they can cover that. Like, I heard that, uh, what's the old girl that's pregnant from Supergirl? Yeah. So, does Supergirl shut down, or are they going to film her from the well, waist up? they're on a break or... right now. They don't have to worry about it. Well, they but, but if they weren't on a break, they would still have to, you know what I mean? They would still mm-hmm. have to do certain things where they'd have to show her, you know, and, and film her a little differently. And that's all they had to do for Batwoman. She could have gone and, and done the film a little differently. She wanted out. She didn't, you know, those, when you're doing a movie, it's, you know, some grueling days, yada, yada, you're done. When you're doing a series, those 15-hour days are all the time. They're all the time. You have to come out with content Every week, every week. So if you don't want to do that work, if you want to do the work of a movie where two, three months you're done versus a show where every day, you know what I mean, there's a difference. And you didn't, you didn't want that work, which is your option, of course. You, there's no one to force you to say you have to do that, but at least just be like, I, I didn't want to do it. Because what happens if, if that's the case, if that's the case, then now she's healed, right? So why leave now? She decided she wanted I mean, to do something else. Well, this, but then that's my point. You didn't want to do it no more. Mm-hmm. So now it's, oh, my stomach hurt, or my, I had surgery, uh, this happened. Just say, hey, listen, I didn't like it. I don't want to do something else. Don't blame it on something that could be easily fixed. You don't have to. There is stunt people out there that will take care of it for you. You know what I mean? And we've seen we've seen actors with their stunt doubles. I mean, it's not hard. So yeah, I just just say just say you just just say you want it out. Siobhan, you know what I mean? Just say you want it out. Siobhan, what do you think about that? I agree with Chief. It's, 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 it smells like horseshit to me, and I this is what I think. More than it was, she got hurt. Look. A lot of people do their own stunts on their shows or their movies, and then they either get hurt and they come back and film. They're not giving away their paycheck. They're not giving away a starring role unless you got something better, you know, on the horizon. You got something better right now in the work. I think when they got the negative, when she got the negative feedback from this show, because it's not doing well. It's not. Everybody, a lot of people thought her acting was terrible. I mean, you. It, we'd be hard pressed to ignore the reddits and the, you know, these places where. Uh, 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 networks and movie studios and the like solicit feedback directly from the audience. They they do re- they do look at these reddits. They they're, they hire people to look at this kind of stuff, social media, etc., to to look at and see engage the popula- uh the population's opinion on whatever the property is, right? And 
they probably were looking a lot of uh, of this feedback, or, or she at least got wind of it and, and, and thinking, God, I, maybe this isn't the move for me. Maybe this isn't the role for me because it's something to be said about being the, you know, squinty eyed, sexy, androgynous girl who has maybe like five lines of dialogue and something to being the lead of a show. You got to carry this show. You got to carry scenes. You got to give people a reason to want to watch the show. It can't be just that you're the lead, but you're not interesting. We're watching this show for somebody else who's the breakout character or the actual star of this show and not the lead. I think that kind of feedback got into her head. She may have gotten into her own head about this and said, I don't want to do it. I I can't imagine you wanting to walk away just because you got hurt doing a stunt. That's that, that goes with the territory. And like chief said, they hire stunt doubles all the time. Everybody gets, you get a stunt double. I mean, that, that goes without saying, I think that the negative press received from her own performance and the performance of the show probably got in her head and she may have wanted to back away prematurely. Who knows? I think that, but I definitely think the negative feedback played the biggest role in that because Here's the thing also, you can't speak your mind. She's in a a, a world where you cannot speak your mind if you're in a bad working environment. It usually happens 10 to 20 years later. Like, look at Ellen. You think anybody from when Ellen signed, I'm pretty (laughs) sure when Ellen's run, not to segue into that, I'm pretty sure when that that show was in its ground stages, it was all about a unity and a family, et cetera. We're going to make a great environment, everybody. It's sunshine and rainbows until Ellen is replaced Oprah as the new Oprah. And now Ellen's smelling herself and the the, the claws come out. It's getting mean and nasty in here. These people weren't saying that when it was happening. They waited years down the road to start coming out with this stuff. And, you know, who knows? Maybe it's the same kind of scenario with... uh, Ruby Rose in this, but I think it's it, it's way more to it than that. That's just one uh, 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 theory I have in regard to why she's got this, that had that change in her posture and wanting to be on that show. Who knows, man? We, we I know one thing. We, we're not going to find out immediately from her anyway. Right. Okay. So there was huge news over at Warner Media. They had a bunch of layoffs at DC and cut DC Comics to the cut like a third of their editorial staff and you know there was some of this is because of coronavirus comic book sales aren't as strong as they used to be marvel isn't dealing with that as much i'm not going to talk about the comic books i know you guys aren't into that like that but i was curious as to the impact you guys think that the lack of success for the dc movies have had on dc as a brand and if you think DC, which I do, is still viable to become just as big as Marvel, and if you think it can only be achieved through the movies like we've seen with Marvel, because these guys were on the brink of bankruptcy before they started dabbling into movies, and it was like, oh, shoot, there's a whole new world. And they started with Blade, went to X-Men and Spider-Man, then eventually to the Avenger films. And then it was just like, hey, every movie we're cranking out earns a billion dollars. DC could be in that position, but for whatever reason, it's not working. So let's let me I'm gonna give you guys three ways you would fix DC movies. And Chief, since Javon just started, I'll let you go first. All right, so yeah, I think it's most definitely the the fact that the layoffs are coming and, and it hasn't hit Marvel like that. It's definitely because of the movies. Um, case in point, I know uh, I know someone who owns uh, a couple of businesses, right? And uh, they have a they actually have two stores. Coronavirus hit, and the other businesses were still doing well because they weren't businesses where you needed to, you know, you had to go into a store or a restaurant or whatever. And uh, those businesses were still doing well. So when this thing ended, they were okay with their other businesses because they had money to funnel from other spots to, you know what I mean, take up for the, the money that they hadn't been making through their businesses. You know, during the coronavirus, 
you still got to pay for that storefront or, you know what I mean, things like that. So uh, with this D.C. thing, yeah, they, 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 they don't put out as much movies. And then their movies a lot of times aren't as good. Um, so uh, to fix it, you've got to, one, you've got to make more movies. Uh, this three-year wait in between movies is some bullshit. Um, just like, for example, Wonder Woman. Uh, it, if it seems like it's been a long time since Wonder Woman came out, that's because it fucking has been. It's, it, it's absolutely ridiculous that Wonder Woman didn't come out last year. Um, they pushed it back. Uh, we're not talking about, you know, a, when's, when's the new Aquaman coming out? Like I said, they flubbed and dubbed the whole uh, uh, Man of Steel thing. We're always complaining about that. Um so that's that's number one. We need we need more movies, a volume of movies, and they need to be inter- interconnected. Uh, you know, uh, you've got to follow to some degree. You've got to follow the Marvel plan in, in some in some ways because it's successful. So you would think that they would say, "Hey, that's a successful." Like they, Marvel has laid the blueprint already. You know. Um, Reminds me of the Giants when nobody could beat Tom Brady, and the Giants were like, "Well, the only way to beat Tom Brady is to go out there and and rush him and rattle him." And teams that followed that blueprint beat the Patriots. Teams that did not lost to the Patriots. Now the blueprint is there. Follow it. Uh, the other thing about it is, y'all gonna need some good directors, man. If you're putting out these movies, man. They cannot suck. Ah, oh. so you have three or four out of the, all the movies that you put out. Three or four of them good. Shazam, uh, Aquaman, Wonder Woman. I'd like Man of Steel, but people didn't, so I won't count it. So that's three. Can you guys name another one that was great? I think Batman versus Superman has the most. Man, great. Most- I'm like with you. I like those movies, but I think it earned more than everything beside Wonder Woman and Aquaman. So but people hated sure. the movie. It was they were kind of torn on it. So if you want to say universally loved on these new movies, I think it's just Aquaman and Wonder Woman and Shazam. Okay. So the three. So that's the big three. That's your Bull Shark, your Great White, and your Tiger Shark, right? Your big three. So now we're talking about. These movies, you know, they got to come out. They've got to be halfway decent. So I don't know if you need to – I don't know if these Marvel directors are in a contract. I don't know if you can poach them. I don't know if they can switch back and forth. Uh, you can write – you can make up some deal where Marvel gets 5% of the, the gross and you can borrow the director. I don't know. But you need better. You need better quality movies. The movies need to intertwine. <sighs> And I think that's how DC comes about it, the three steps, you know. Uh, better movies. The movies intertwining. And then you need a volume of movies. Good deal. All right, Javon, what you got on that? Uh, I agree. I mean, uh, when I look at DC... I can't point to but three movies that I actually like of their their their, their current universe, right? Um, Marvel's Teflon, dude. They they've taken their not as popular parties, or par, par, not as popular properties, and made them into franchises. We're gonna get a Doctor Strange. We're gonna get another Ant Man and the Wasp. You know, we, we they they turned these movies into successes, and. I'll be honest with you, I didn't think a lot of these would hit, especially Ant-Man and the Wasp, or Ant-Man, rather, and, or, or Doctor Strange. I just didn't think those would be big hits. I didn't think Captain Marvel would be a big hit, but what it, they were. They were. They got the blueprint. Like Chief said, 
and DC's remiss for not following that blueprint. I, I just think when it comes to how they how DC has put this thing together, they just said, you know what? We got to put out a movie because Marvel put one out. We got to put a movie out. So who's it going to be? There's no timeline. They're not following anything. They're just... For example, when you make an off-shot Joker movie starring not the guy that's going to be the Joker in the Batman movie, and you're going to hold up a standalone... I don't even know if the Joker has anything to do with the immediate DC universe as it stands. It doesn't. It the, when I say the Joaquin, it's just a standalone. Can you imagine them doing a... Uh, <clears throat> Can you imagine Marvel doing a, um, I don't know, a a, a standalone insert Iron Man villain in here sense. movie? It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> it's like you're, you're just constantly working against yourselves here. I don't get what they're trying to put together. I don't get what they're trying to do. Um, I'm not going to say I hope they know what they have. A, I'm not going to say I hope they have a formula, I hope that it's going to work out, whatever, because they don't have a formula. They're not throwing shit against the wall to see if it sticks. It's 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 not going to. You've seen this. You've seen time and again where this is not working. I don't think it's ever going to work. Um, it's sad because when you look at the animated features that, 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 that DC has put together, uh, especially for the Batman series, these are the winners. You this is the kind of what you need to be doing. I don't understand why they I don't understand what they're trying to do with their live action films. Just stick to what works and go from there. Stick to what works and go from there. Start doing like some of these uh automakers did. Start doing like what uh Kia and, and Hyundai did. Steal away from some of these people from Toyota and, and, and Honda. To help make your cars do that, steal some of these people who crafted the Marvel universe as we know it to help you get this shit back on course. They're doing that right now. You have James Gunn on the Suicide Squad. Mm-hmm. James Gunn, you know, very successful with Guardians of the Galaxy. So they yeah. took the stage out of which both of you guys said. So he's somebody. He's gonna do the new Suicide Squad. Yeah. Um, okay. Okay. I mean, a new new film. Some of the same characters Ooh. holding over from the previous one. I'm not sure they're okay. going to reboot, but it's going to be James Gunn's version of it. Okay. Well, there. That's smart. Start bring some of these people in. I, I see that they. That you said that they're doing it. I, I'm I'm glad they're doing it. That's what you're going to have to do because otherwise, you, you're failing and you're never going to catch up at this rate. You're never going to catch up. We'll see. We'll see. They got a long way to go. They do. It's, it's wild. And they've got a big DC fan event going on, I guess, in a couple more weeks. And they're going to show all all the stuff they've got so far. Maybe the Justice League Snyder Cut trailer, a update on Shazam, which is coming chief in 2021. No, 2022. We may finally figure out when Wonder Woman is coming. At this stage, Wonder Woman's going to come out and no one's going to care anymore. I'm really, I'm worried about that with this movie because I feel like there's a window of interest and then once that window closes, it's kind of like, oh yeah, that's right, that was coming. To, oh wow, y'all are finally getting this out? To, eh, whatever, I'll catch it later. Yeah. Jeff. No, that's going to happen, Jeff, because, oh, go ahead, Chief. No, I'm just wondering, when did Shazam first come out? When was the original movie out? Uh, Chief, I think that was 2018. So I think that was, no, 2019. I think that came out before Avengers Infinity War, which would be good Wasn't time. it early 2019, though? Yeah. It was. Well, it was like March. I believe. And you're telling me it's going to take you three years? See, this is my point. Three more years. Yep. For part two. Three more years. Like yeah. no. They came out April. Like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's not why good. isn't it? Why isn't it coming out next year? That doesn't yeah. make any sense, man. And this is what I'm saying about DC. Like, this is this is what they do. 
So Shazam came out, everybody loves Shazam, and they said, you know what? We'll give it to you in three more years. <laughs> I don't think it would be years. so bad. <laughs> it wouldn't be so bad if they had stuff that people wanted to see and were looking forward to it because a lot of the Captain Captain America films, they were spaced out pretty far between each other. I don't know if it was three years, but it's just one of those deals where it's like if you have other quality stuff that people want to see, it doesn't that it, that gap doesn't feel as long. But well, they're also, promising. yeah, they did okay. it was three years between the first Captain America and the second one, and then two years between Winter Soldier and Civil War. Okay, but hold on. Here's another thing, though. If if you're putting out movies in volume, you can also throw Shazam in some of those movies. Right. Not as the main character, but as a character. Keep his presence. And up. then by the time his own his own movie comes out, you're like, yeah, you're ready for it because he's been doing shit in other movies. Like, this doesn't make any sense, man. <laughs> this, this model doesn't make any sense. Yep. You know what I mean? And I say that with no bass in my voice. I'm just like, yo. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you you well, gee, you tell, you hit on it right there. There's no anticipation for these movies. They're just dropping on it, like Biggie said. They drop unexpectedly, like bird shit. You don't know when they're coming out. There's no anticipation for any of these films. They come out in 2022, man. Damn, <laughs> dude. I mean, the coronavirus already killed 165,000 of us. Will we be here for 2022? I don't know. That's a long ass time away, man. A lot that can is. happen. A lot can happen in two years. Yeah, that's Hell, what a lot, happen. a lot can happen in one year, right? Jesus. Yeah. That's, that's what I'm saying. A lot can happen in one year. So I don't know, man. That doesn't make any sense to me. I don't know why we're waiting uh three years for Shazam. That means Aquaman's got what, another year before two years, a year or two before it comes out? I don't know, know, man. I I don't know. They're they're scheduled so, for stuff. Oh, 2022 for Aquaman 2. It's a yo! <laughs> 2020. And Aquaman so came out the year years before later. Shazam, right? It came out in 2018. <laughs> yeah, dude. That's so four, four years. years four years. Think about... Let's, hold on. Hold on. Just for a second, though. Let's just think <laughs> about the actor. The actor is four years older, dude. Like, like, by the time this, you know what I mean? By yeah. the time this thing comes, every four, it's it's almost like they're following the bad boy model. <laughs> Will Smith and uh, Martin Martin Lawrence Lawrence. model. <laughs> yeah, Yo, like, you're going to put out a movie every eight years? Is this what's happening now? It doesn't make any sense for them have, to be like. I have like, a clue for you, Chief. So I was looking back to see how pronounced this was throughout the, you know, the case of this modern DC film. And uh, Dark Knight came out in 2008, and Dark Knight Rises came out in 2012. 12, yeah. And Batman Begins so came see, out in 2005. So a three-year gap there. Uh, it's, 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 you know, yeah, you know there's a big difference with that, right? <laughs> it's a huge difference. I'm, I'm gonna tell you. I'm, I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say this. There's a huge difference because you cared about those Batman movies because they were good. You wanted to see them. I'm not saying that Aquaman wasn't good. I I lost interest when they got to the action because it looked silly. I was like, why do they need cars on the water? <laughs> I just oh, kept. You know, oh, uh, I, that took me. <laughs> Javon, hmm? it's not. You know what the problem is now. The Batman, mm-hmm. the Batman could be that spread out, but now you're used to the Marvel model, right? So, you're right, it, it's a different. Right. It was a different story back then. If, if they had spaced it, but now you're talking about a whole new concept where people know, like, yo, we're supposed to be getting content. We're hung. Like, it's a different world now. We 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 need content. Yeah. We need it. Blah blah blah, and we know that you're capable of putting out movies sooner than this. So mm-hmm. as we wait for, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, man, that was, man, like Aquaman was fantastic, man. I can't wait till, the, till four years from now when they put out part two. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. When the sense. next one comes out. 
That nigga make you sense. Know, so Marvel dude, was funny. doing a no limit drops. They were putting something out. They <laughs> Every, put something out all the time. They were doing like three a year. Dude, yeah. exactly. And so you figure when you first see Aquaman, if you was in ninth grade, the next time you'll see Aquaman, you very oh well could be graduating <laughs> high school. You you'll be in, you'll be out of school. You'll be a freshman in college. That's terrible. That doesn't make sense. You have, <laughs> really? so you telling me that. I could, and the next time you see that, you have graduated college for part three of Aquaman? <laughs> and that may and be the DC? only time you see Aquaman, too. He may not right. be in the Justice then, League or any other movie. Well, then, then, then you got to take the count. That's four years. That's four, three movies, 12 years. He's aged out. Yeah, that's not smart. I mean, the dude, the dude is in his 30s now, ain't he? Uh, late 30s. I think 30s. maybe late, yeah. So that's what I'm saying. He may be aged out before this damn thing is even over if y'all keep spreading the movies out like this. Nobody wants to see no 50-year-old Jason Momoa. 41. Do his thing. Dude, he's 41 already. 41. Jeez. Yeah, this is my point. So he's 41. By the time mm. Aquaman comes out, he'll be almost mid-40. By the time it comes out, he'll be almost in his 50s. By the time you know, part comes out. Any movies Robert Downey Jr. hit in Marvel Studios by the time he hit his fifties? How many what now? How many movies Robert Downey Jr. did for Marvel Studios by the time he hit in his fifties? I don't know. What was it? What, four or five? Oh no, man! He did three uh, Iron Man films, uh, two Avenger films. Uh, Captain America. So what's that? Six already? Six. That's six. Yeah, dude. That's that's. And how old? He's fifty-five. Yeah, six films. Oh. So when you he, put it, see, and that's what I'm saying. When you put it in that time perspective, it doesn't make sense. No wonder they're loading off people. Yeah, that's that's not good. So here's some other news. This is not DC. Disney has halted production on the release of physical copies of 4K Ultra HD films from their studio's catalog. Um, So that means they're going to keep production going on new films. So, you know, Black Widow, you're going to get that in 4K. But you're not going to be able to get, say, a a Home Alone 2 or Aliens on 4K Ultra HD. Now, this is, you know, there's some thought that this is because Disney's pushing their Disney Plus 4K service and don't really feel the need to accommodate people with that. Are you guys thinking this is that we're reaching the end of the 4K Blu-ray era where people are getting stuff or are we always going to have that niche group of folks like me who want to have it just in case something happens on Disney Plus? Hey Jeff, man, I'm gonna be honest, man. I haven't, I haven't bought a DVD and or game physically in like three years. Oh, so you already started? There. Yeah, oh. I haven't, I haven't. Matter of fact, my man came through about that's about about a month ago, and I handed him all my non Blu-ray CDs. And I just mm-hmm. gave them to him. Man. I said, I'm going to take these with you. Because I don't even watch them no more. It was like 200 CDs I had just sitting in the house. Well, that's, they were sitting in my shed. Mm-hmm. And, um, and you know, just collecting dust. Dust. And he's an older dude. And I know older dudes, what do they do? They they, they still watch, you know, he might got a VHS uh, player at home. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so, but, and, and, and think about it. Because, Y'all still buy CDs? Dude, you can't even buy, you can't really buy them now, now because Best so Buy doesn't sell. I haven't, a, I haven't bought a CD. I didn't even Maybe know they stopped years. selling CDs. Yeah. That's you, how, you, that's how long back. it's been since I looked for a CD. I, <laughs> I haven't bought a CD in seven, eight years. You know, it's wild. Um, the new cars don't have a CD player in them. Uh-uh. They don't? I do. So if I wanted to take one of my old CDs and put it in the car, I could not. 
and has to have one of But it's a DVD player, too, so I don't know how that works. I don't yeah. know if it plays Blu-ray. Hmm. Anyways, but, yeah, I feel what you're saying. I just, you know, like when I get into the car, it connects instantly to my Apple Play, and I'm gone. So that's what I'm saying. Like when I buy, I'll, I'll download Madden for PS4. I'll download Madden for Xbox, Xbox. And then, you know, I'm there. I, you know what I mean? So I don't. You know, I don't normally go and, 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 you know, I don't go and get DVDs. So when uh, Madden drops in the next week or so, somewhere around here, I don't even know when the hell is Madden dropping. That's fun. I thought about it. Yeah. Anyways, if it drops, when it drops, I'll download both. I was looking at the X-Men, the Marvel X-Men game. Mm Mm-hmm. I'll probably download that, but I'm not going to the store. I don't go to GameStop. Only time I go to GameStop is when I needed some headphones and I needed to talk to one of the the. Uh, can we still say nerds? I don't know. There may be a coalition that will start protesting the show and call well, for. And, and I don't mean that. I don't mean that in a rude way. I'm just saying one of the store nerds, and I mean nerds <laughs> as in, you know what I'm saying. I mean nerds as in knowledgeable. Smart person. <laughs> I don't mean you know. I don't mean nerd. You know, with a pocket protector, and you know, I went in there to beat them up. I just mean that <laughs> the person here, right? Nerds, nerds. <laughs> you know, I ain't going there like over. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, but there was a Lamar in there, and I was in there, and uh, <laughs> I got, I got the information I needed from him, and uh. You know, he hooked me up with a with a decent pair of, you know, headphones with the piece that worked both on PS4 and on the Xbox One. And, you know, I, I thanked him for his service. He knew, you know, he knew a lot. And there it was, my, my GameStop experience. But I don't go for, I don't go for DVDs or CDs or, you know, the, the nothing, none of that. Everything's downloaded right now. I got two hard drives for my Xbox. I got one hard drive for the PS4. You know what I mean? Let's get it. So, um, yeah. So, Javon, am I assuming that you feel the same way? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Good I, deal. What's the point? I mean, everything gets phased out. This is going to be another one, man. Remember when we used to go to Blockbuster? <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that the, the <laughs> last standing blockbuster opened up to be like a bed and breakfast for four days? Hey, you know, and the first thing I thought of was a movie night at the blockbuster. Yeah, dude. I mean, why That would have right? been worth, what was it, the $4 or so that <laughs> charged the day? <laughs> yeah. yeah. That would have been worth every penny and yeah. then some. Right. Because, I mean, you, you can't run out of movies to watch. Yeah. All right. Well, fellas, it's, it's, it's that time. It is that time of the week. Do you guys have any nominees for Dummies of the Week? Or do you want me to start things off? Because I have one primed and ready. Oh, by all means. Okay. My choice, of course, because this name is just, I, I'm going to butcher it. So I'm going to apologize in advance. The Seattle Seahawks wave rookie cornerback Kima Severan. Earlier this week, after he was caught on video trying to sneak a woman into the team's hotel, a source confirmed, he dressed her up in Seahawks gear in an attempt to disguise her as a player. So this dude, much like my man, Lou Williams, with his wings going to the strip club, he decided, you know what? I know there's a pandemic, but I'm feeling that she's pretty good. I think she's okay. I'm going to bring her to the hotel where my entire team is playing or is staying just so I can get some, uh, little fun, little fun after practice session. So that, that's clearly my dummy of the week. This dude was putting it all on the line just for one good night. So now he's on, you know, Jeff, he's, he's a dummy, but I, he ain't as bad as chicken wing Williams to me because this clown left for chicken wings. You know, Uber <laughs> Eats would have just he brought left, you quote unquote chicken, chicken wings. wings. 
Hey, this DoorDash, Uber Eats. You got <laughs> options. That's so somebody many. bought you some wings, dog. Lou is just trying to go with the cover for the wings. I, I'm content to say that. Yes, you were there for the wings. Right. Absolutely. Javon, you got one? You know, I, I, my, my, my dummies are everybody who's up in arms about the WAP song. If you haven't heard <laughs> the WAP song, it's with Cardi B and uh, Megan Thee Stallion. Um... I ain't knocking these ladies for doing their thing, man, because, hey, I'm, I'm glad to see more than one female rapper at a time in the business eating, you know. Right. Um, I, I would love to see a Lauren Hill or type alternative because everybody doesn't have to be Miss Raunchy sex. You know what I mean? It, that's not the only lane for the ladies. I don't, I'm don't. i not saying that because I'm, 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 I'm disliking or hating. I just want there to be a broad spectrum where – Young ladies don't have to sell records in the hip hop world by being a hypersexual sexualized being. You can you can be whoever you want to be and still sell your records as a young woman. That's what Thanks, I want. That's Kim. ultimately what I want. Is that what you do? <laughs> <clears throat> but to everybody offended, it's like, dude, <clears throat> raunchy lyrics in hip hop. By females, raunchy lyrics in hip hop and, and, and raunchy lyrics in, in funk and, and R and B, etc. We we this is nothing new, okay? Especially by the ladies. Go back and cite what's my girl name? Uh, Millie Jackson. Mm-hmm. Go back and listen to some of these records from the fifties and sixties. I can't think of these artists' names because they're very little known. But I, I saw something about this some years back on. Um, <clears throat> Fab Five, Five Freddy used to have a show um, that ran on Vice so, so when, at the inception of Vice and what it was was like a it was an oral history of music and especially of hip hop right uh, 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 where a lot of essential themes came from in the genre right and one of them he said you know what well, one of the shows was about Profanity about raunchy lyrics, profanity, et cetera. And, you know, most people thought that before NWA, nobody was saying this and saying that on the record. It was like, dude, we've been doing, this has been going on since the 1920s. Music was recorded. Somebody's been saying something dirty. <laughs> so applying that to today, right now, with this and the outrage over that song, it's like, this grow up. You've been listening and reciting raunchy lyrics your whole life at this point. If you think about it, we know more years with hip hop and the parental advice, hip hop and not just hip hop. Exactly. With the we we know more years with the parental advisory sticker across the music landscape than we do without it. We weren't born and raised in the fifties and sixties when America's cult, moral code or moral standard was as rigid as it was then. Hey, my first movie I saw in the theaters was Nightmare on Elm Street. You know what I mean? It, look, we it, we we we've been through this. This is nothing new. Stop being the moral cops. If you don't like the fact that the ladies are out here saying that they got that good good or whatever they call it, whatever, that's your problem. But it's it's not a moral issue. Stop it. You, you you're being weird. Let it go. All right, Chief. You got one to wrap wrap us up here. You know the funny thing about that rap thing, it's rap. Rap is one of the raunchiest things you ever heard. And and Prince, you know what's funny? I've heard plenty mm-hmm. raunchier things from the men. I mean, NWA had yeah. a raunchier. Uh, and that was in the, you know, 89, 90. No matter, just on what? Mm-hmm. Right. Thank right. you. At a high school dance, me and the homies bailed in. I saw her sitting with the friend so sexy. Damn! She thought she was all that. She wouldn't even look at us because we wore the black hat. Yeah. Um, yeah, y'all know how the rest of that joint go. Anyway, uh, in response, to, and Jeff, you had my dummy of the week, so I'm not going to pick one. I'm going to ride on yours. Oh, uh, man, you can say oh, some more comments on it because I thought it was stupid. Yeah, man, but that was going to be my joint. I'm like, damn, dude, you risked it all. For, for some some whack. <laughs> I mean, I, let me tell you what 
tell you something. I have never chosen the church over money. Not one time. And I don't understand. And I make little bank compared to these dudes. And I don't understand how a dude who could be making up to a uh, rookie, $100,000 a game maybe, uh, who would choose $100,000 a game, you know, choose a female over $100,000 a game. I don't even understand that. I'm good. You know what I mean? Uh, Pox are the best. Money brings women. Women bring lives. So, <laughs> yeah. listen, if if you have the money, they will come. You know what I mean? You don't have to help. You didn't have to sneak her in. The parking lot more than likely would have worked. And you could have dismissed her from your car from downstairs. So, uh yeah, none of that makes sense to me. None of that makes sense to me. Um, you know what I mean? I mean, hey, we we we're, we're I'm not rich, but I've gotten car love, Javon, Jeff. So I I don't understand how you would even risk the biscuit like that. Like that, like yo, like have you have you ever made love to a woman and been like, hmm, that was worth a hundred grand? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean? Not, and, 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 and not to say, you know, and not ever, I'm saying I've had some really good nights in bed with a woman. I mean, some nights where after she has left, I just sit back and I'm, I'm giggling to myself. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, you know, like what the hell just happened? You know, but I wouldn't, if I was to put a price on it, eighty seven fifty. You know what I mean? I <laughs> no. You know what I mean? No, no. Not not a hundred thousand, huh? No, 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 no. Never a hundred thousand. I've never had a. I've never had a hundred thousand um, dollar uh, sexual session. Not one time. <laughs> not 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 close. Not. Not <laughs> You know what I mean? Not even, you know, like, mm, maybe. Mm-mm. So I just don't understand these dudes, man. I don't, and, and, and that comes back to me thinking, if you've ever smoked weed in your life, I I have smoked weed at a point in my life, not as a everyday thing, but somebody said, yo, you know, uh, I watched him roll the joint, and he was like, yo, hit this, and I've hit it, and I was like, is this it? You know what I mean? And I could never understand how people, again, would give up millions of dollars a year to smoke. Like, I don't understand that at all. Uh, we're going to offer you $5 million or this joint. <laughs> oh, let me get that joint. Let me get that joint right there. Let me smoke that. Mm-mm. You know what I mean? It was all worth so, it. So, yeah. So, and that goes along that line. So women, don't be offended. I don't mean to offend because, I mean, if you think about it, have you ever had a $100,000 sexual encounter with a man? I'm sure you haven't because it's not worth $100,000. At most, if, if it's eighty seven fifty for me, I'm sure it's like forty nine ninety nine for y'all. But <laughs> what I'm saying is it's just not worth that. It's not worth it. I would never risk my career for a one night in a hotel room with any woman. Well, well, fellas, I think that does it Mm -hmm. for us. So thank y'all as always for rolling with me. Thank y'all out there for listening. This episode of Lyle's Movie Files has been filed.